what do I say to people who say I'm a telepath? I say prove it. In the meantime, this is my pomegranate setup. Today's sweet eat is going to be of a small pomegranate. And I probably am not going to have time to do the whole thing. And let's see. Yes, it's all good to go. It's nice and shiny. And I've got my water. I'll show what I do with this. Okay. And I'm going to show you how I eat my pomegranate. I This is a snack I'll have in the autumn or winter. Um, and I love it when I read. So Chronicles of Narnia, my favorite book box set. Still have the one from what, the 1990s. I was born in the early to mid 1990s, 1992, 1993 approximately. Here's my set. My favorite of these, my favorite book all time, The Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, is the second book in the series. So it was actually a series of seven books published, what, like in the 19... 60s or something like that the book number two the lion the witch and the wardrobe it's number two like me i am the second child in my family so it's like cool this book was written for me oh 1950 so this, these books were written in 1950 i have hinted at um well i've, I've brought i have a number of favorite books so we'll be fair that way um, but I brought up before, you know, like, for all I know, there is, like, Narnia, and you know, you can enter Narnia and get pregnant and then age the baby to 40 years, bring the baby back out of Narnia, and it's older than me. Is that my Tomas Seishon, and I married him, and Seishon's dad, the dad? I don't know. I really don't know what happens when I'm sleeping, much less, um, uh, like, if I'm sleepwalking, if I go into Narnia, I would just have no idea what I've done in my life, now would I? Okay, so... Let's get going on the pomegranate. This is for the seeds. A Tupperware container. Small. There's less seeds in it than there is the fruit. So I could have gone with a smaller size, but this is an <coughs> instructional video. Not really. It's a sharing video. Here's my bowl for the seeds. Um, not the seeds. Sorry. This this is for the outer part. I'll show you of the pomegranate. This is for my hands. I get one damp. So we're gonna take. Get it damp, screen it like that, and now it's nice and damp, and this is to easily wipe the juices off my fingers, and then this is for the bigger chunks that get stuck in my fingers. So, up first, and this is my knife, I do a small knife. I cut the top off, oh, and I guess I should say, I'm wearing my Joanne fabrics, I made this in, um, approximately 2005 for a home economics class using fabric from Joanne Fabrics. I'll link to my three other videos uh, where I've either mentioned Joanne Fabrics or worn this same apron made from J Joanne Fabrics, which was what, founded in Washington State? But then the fictional realm of Wikipedia says it was founded in Ohio when in reality it was Washington State, but I don't actually know because I wasn't alive when it was founded in 1943. <laughs> Yeah, today is Thursday, 12 October 2023. As a filming, this community of Innisardin, um, city of Shoreline, King County, Washington State, United States of America, Planet Earth, the original. All right, so the top is off. Now what I do is I take and I poke in at the top. And I take my knife, and I don't go in very deep. And I go to the bottom. And I do a line up like this. Then I do the same thing on the other side. And I try to have the lines meet each other on the bottom. Like that. And then, why I'm wearing an apron is this stuff squirts. And here is the pomegranate fruit. The uh, seeds. So it's a seed. Here's what they look like. And then, knife in, cut down, and we're gonna do it again. I right, cut it into quarters. I do half at a time though. So we got, and I don't necessarily always go all the way through. So that's the line. Take. 
pop it open. And this time we got some good stuff. Just kind of loose seeds. Take and show you. This is an excellent pomegranate. Big seeds. Nice and juicy. I'm going to take my Tupperware. So this one is for the seeds. Okay. And then the goal is to take the seeds out and to do so, uh, let me take, so I just kind of like tug at them with my thumb to get them off and then put them in here. It's kind of fun. It's like if you don't have berry trees in the backyard or in a nearby ravine or gully to go and kind of pick berries, it's kind of like picking berries, but only in a fruit form. So here's some more. And this is something I've done for how old am I? I'm approximately 31 years old. So I've done this for approximately like maybe 18 years. Um, it's a fruit I enjoy because it does take me a little bit of time to it's take apart. It's not instant gratification. Uh, and I kind of like that. Like I have to work for it. All right, now here's some with little pieces of the interior on them. So what I do with these is take and put it in my refuse bin. Do this. Take it up, put it in here and the rest in there. So that's the refuse bin. And this is also going to go in there. All right, we're doing good. And here's the seeds and I should wipe up. So the dry one, wipe up any splatters. That I'm also wiping up the water from my water glass. Oh, we're doing pretty good. All right, we'll see. Um, do I got any stories for you? My sister was thinking of moving to Park City slash like Salt Lake City, Utah area. Oh, and it sounds like they actually have a home they're interested in now. Um, it's a home they already bought. I don't know if they still have a mortgage on it or not. It's the house that my granddad, Andrew, the one who died this year, 2023, uh, built with my grandma who died this year, <laughs> Rosemary, um, in Wedgwood, Seattle. And so she bought that from them with her now husband, Jake, and my sister's name is Lindsay. And she's an older sister, 1989 baby. Um, and so they, it sounds like they might be settling in the area, right? Uh, but I don't actually know. Uh, but it, that, that's the kind of vibes. Either way, there's interest in a house that has been expressed. Um, after first expressing interest in moving in, what would that be? Northern Utah? They've also expressed interest in living in Los Angeles. And they've also expressed interest in living in Australia. And then I, th I think it's kind of an interesting. So I'm on to my second segment, my second quarter. We'll see how much we can get through. Um, and I kind of, they have lived in Seattle their whole lives, except for Lindsay spent three months, two or th like approximately three months in France for cooking school. And then she lived in England for exactly like one month one time. And aside from that, they lived in Boston for like a year and a half or something. And so she's very, she's lived in Seattle longer than I have, or I spent like, what, eight years away living in South Africa uh, for about six months, then living in Hawaii for about three years, and then living in California for over four years. So she's much more um, she, she's lived here, she's older than me by multiple years and she's lived here longer <laughs> for just of the time um, I've been alive. Um, so yeah, it'd be interesting what they do when, she, or in what she has done historically when she lives somewhere else is she uses it as a base for travel, which is, I think, kind of clever. She has, she, she makes six figures from her main job. Um... And so, and then she has, you know, the double income with her and her husband. 
and at least so far as I'm aware. And so they can afford to travel and they can afford a dog sitter for the dogs while they're gone and that kind of stuff because they've got big dogs like Leonberger, so like 150 pound dog and then months later later it's just like a 70 80 pound dog. So they do need dog sitters because uh, those dogs get hungry and can't just leave a bowl of food out for them you know, kind of thing. Um, but that's not really safe anyway no matter the size of the dog. Um, but yeah so they'll use it as a base for travel so like when she went to England she traveled um, Scotland, England, Ireland kind of thing and then when she was in France she traveled all around Europe. She like was there for French cooking school for three months and then her Jake went over and met her and they traveled Europe for a month. And then when she lived in Boston, they lived in Boston, they went to like New York City in North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, Maryland. They went all over the East Coast traveling. I'm gonna stop there with the dissecting I'm halfway. All right, that's the refuse, it's the half that's left, and then the seeds, which look really good. So let's go ahead and do some of these. But I thought that was smart. And I thought of the places she has, the coolest one for like if they were to use it as a base of travel, I think would think would be Australia. When they've lived here, um, they've gone to kind of Central America and the Pacific Islands. But she's always been interested in going to Southeast Asia, which is a region I've actually I don't think I've, has ever made my travel list. Um, but I was like, that'd be great if she wanted to travel Southeast Asia, live in Australia, not have it so close that it's tantalizing and they go all the time, but also close enough that they, um, can go if they want to. This is really good. They're good. They're big. They're juicy. Sweet. Not super pomegranate-y in taste though. I'm a telepath. Am I also telekinetic? And then if I am, prove it. And am I more like Professor Charles Xavier or the redheaded lady I can't remember the name of? Personally, to match my internal rage levels, I would personally assign myself as the Magneto type character. Yeah. I'm a very, <laughs> my nickname growing up, Temper Tantrum Tannis, or oh, Tannis the Terrible. I came up with better nicknames at school. What was it Tan Tannis Atlantis? No, that's Amber Heard. Forty out of ten. I. It's not the best pomegranate I've had, but it's spectacular. Which should give you an idea. Best pomegranate I've had rank, rates higher than a forty out of ten. Happy sweet eats of small pomegranate seeds. Small pomegranate, and getting to see how I eat it. Me, Tannis Corley, Leonardo.